websites. Yeah. How did that come about? You know, I've always wanted to help advisors grow. And we do marketing, which seems like that'd be the way to do it. But at some point, no matter how good you market for somebody, if people see the marketing and they go to their website and their messaging is crap and there's no differentiation and they're not focused on their niche and the design is terrible, like you can't, you can't help them all the way. So for us, it got to a point where we said we're either going to build this or we're going to buy it. And advisor websites already had the technology, the talent, a customer base, and so it just made more sense to acquire. To do that, we, I remember Christopher and I were talking about 20 over 10 kind of had the, the website first and then they did the lead pilot thing and it just it's just a natural kind of progression, mm -hmm. right? And so even with Snappy, the email marketing, the landing pages, everything was built in and then I was like, you know, if you get the website part and then capture that SEO, it's like a slam dunk, you it know? Is. Yeah. And so did is that when's that gonna push out? What's the game plan? Yeah, so I mean we already have a light integration, yep. which you know, contact data, launching campaigns from your website. Um, we're gonna have the text message opt-in widgets and lead capture widgets and stuff like that. People who opt in from the websites can already be put into an opt-in flow. Uh, but there's a lot more to do. I mean we want one seamless user experience, that's obviously part of the roadmap. We're taking the we've got a ninety day plan. The first thirty days is learning getting to know each other, getting the teams to bond, and then we start road mapping everything. And, and we, have, we have pretty audacious goals, and I'm gonna be careful you know, how, how uh, much I say too soon, but ultimately we, we expect to be the best option for advisors for digital marketing websites, and we're gonna work till we get there. Got it, congratulations. Yeah. That's a, I yeah. thought that was a huge pickup, Thank which you. We, we said in our industry gossip. Yeah. We talked at lunch today, man. Yeah. YouTube. YouTube. You messaged me on Twitter, and we were talking about, you know, how can we help in that, right? Because, Absolutely. you know, we've sort of, and by no means are we YouTube experts, honestly, we just, sometimes people point to us and they're like, you know, you're, you do good at marketing, you know, you have, been, it's just trying shit, right? Right. Because um, I can point back to years where no one would come to any other YouTube. And you know, and, and, and you can see that progression, it's all there, right? Six views, seven views, right. and then it jumps up, right? And so you would DM me like, hey, YouTube, that's my focus. Right. Why, what's going on? Well, um, can I be completely honest? So, no, <laughs> you have to be <laughs> big as shit. That's that's it. No, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it completely real. Um, it it really bugs me that we have so many people on all forms of social media that are not financial professionals. They have no credentials. They have no industry experience. They are not client facing. They do not get in front of people, belly to belly, around a table, and help them do planning. But yet, they have massive followings on all different platforms. And they're out there and they will say the craziest thing you could possibly say. And then they follow it up with, This is not advice. Yeah. And somehow that is cool. Like, I, I don't understand that. Because to your point, um, it wasn't but just a few minutes ago that just to get a website up and running was like an act of Congress. And so for me, I'm like, you know what? I'm tired of just sitting back and like just, you know, letting the obstacles that do exist be the reasons why there's not a voice out there. Now, people may look at my content, they may think, well, he's not any good or I'm not interested or. I'm not doing like, you know, lip sync dancing videos, but no one's gonna look at my content and say he hasn't done the push ups to be a financial professional. Yeah. And so I just, I want to do that. And maybe in doing that, I will be connected with people like you guys and other people in the industry that want to create a space for us so that we have a real space in that. And it's, it's no disrespect to anybody that exists, they exist and kudos to them. But I think it's just time for people who actually are like, as Carl Richards would say, real financial advisors to like get in that space and be active. So there you, do, it is. you guys do YouTube, right? Are you with Snappy? Yeah, but we're mediocre at it. Yeah. I, mean, I, 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 I'm <laughs> never, I'm never satisfied with what we get. And you know, we have some great production value, as people have probably seen in some of our videos, like the one on the Joel homepage. Um, but there's something about our content that misses with advisors, and we, I think we've spent so much time and energy creating content for advisors to distribute to their clients. That was always our focus. Yeah, so B2C, it's, it's very different it's, than it's, B2B. And, and yeah. so the, the Snappy Kraken brand is intriguing. It pulls people in. Our value prop is strong. It pulls people in. But our video content does not have the 
value or the entertainment quality or whatever it is that gets advisors hooked on it. So we've done much better with other types of thought leadership, um, but video is just something we're still working on. We haven't given up. We keep That's at it. That's a push. You know, we, yeah, in fact, I've got a new series that I'm going to start soon. Um, it's it's going to be called Nope or Dope, and we're going to take people's advisors' examples of their marketing, and we're going to break it down, and then we're going to rehab it, and then we're going to show it new and talk about it. We're, we're going to try that. That's our next experiment. So, you know, we're just, we're not so, giving up on it. So an advisor come to you, they're going to show you their marketing, and you're going to say <laughs> Nope or Dope to their existing marketing? Yeah, yeah. So we're going to have you them got, You're too nice to do that <laughs> shit. But, but see, what we're going to do is we're going to have them submit it, and then we're going to fix it for them. Okay. So it's like if, if they want to be exposed, then they're going to get free help. I got you. So it, it, there, there'll be a trade off there, but so you know, it's like that bar rescue show. It's like yeah. you know, send send us your stuff, exactly. and like if yeah. it's if it's no, nope, if it's no, nope, we're gonna make it dope. dope. Right, yeah. exactly. Yes. <laughs> okay. right, well, but you know, I'm just saying, like, we're yeah. still we're still working on this. You know, we're trying to get to to be better at video. I got you. Cool. So here's some uh, interesting topic that came up the other day. We got a we we had a prospect in our lead funnel. And so we followed up, like, hey, have you decided? So he sends this email to us and he says, look, you know, he lays out a couple of reasons. One of them were, he said, uh, he said, I don't want to come across as a fuddy-duddy, like I curse a lot, but it really turned me off with the cursing in mm -hmm. the investment updates and things like that. I think it was a little, I don't, I usually don't curse in investment updates unless I'm pissed about something, but right. that's beyond, that's not the point. But the point is, like, so we got to dig in into him as a business you know, like his, his, his assets, his age, what he feels about the investment world, his marketing. And every time we get that feedback, it's always a client that's not a fit to begin with. Right. And so I've always wondered, like, because we do push the envelope and it's not on purpose. You know, we don't tell people do this. We just don't tell them what not to do. It's like, just record who you are in your natural state. If you're angry about something, if you're passionate about something. So the question always comes up, like, how authentic is too authentic? Um, because there are people who record videos and do content, and you can see right yeah. through them. You know, it's scripted. They're always, you know, hunky dory. Right. Like hunky, we get pissed off once in a while, and sometimes that comes through. How, where do you stand on that? And I mean, you are in a little different position because you have investors. I don't. Right. So I was talking earlier, like if, if for me to do compliance, I just go into the room and look in the mirror and ask that person, <laughs> what do you think, right? But we, we're that, and that's why I like this topic, because we're all coming from very different perspectives. Yeah. So, you know, without pissing in your compliance Cheerios, what's, uh, what I do mean, you got? I mean, it, the, the way I, I think you should be yourself. You know, I mean, obviously, we don't always, like, let all of our, you know, bad moments out there for, for the whole world to see. But I, I think, especially if, you do like in your case you have a brand that is cutting edge and, and it reflects a lot of the personality of the leadership then you know obviously that makes sense what I what I really don't like and what I think you touched on is when someone's not authentic right so there's to me there's a difference between not letting all of your you know warts and moles show like you know like hey like I might drop a four-letter word or a curse word every once in a while but you know what I'm not gonna be publicly out there doing that right but when you're totally faking and pretending to be something that you're not, I think everyone can sense that. It's weird how we just are kind of, as human beings, are wired to know when someone's not being truthful um, with their energy or with what they're saying. And so to me, that's a bigger, that's a bigger turnoff. So I think it's, it depends on where you're ultimately comfortable. But I think if you know who your audience is and you know the way I would relate it as an advisor I heard this story a long time ago was, you know, if my target audience was, or target clients were like construction workers and construction company owners, walking in there like, you know, suit and tie, vest, you know, looking like Gordon Gecko, that's not gonna get me anywhere, yeah, yeah. you know? So, but if that's who I truly am, is that the right client fit for me, right? Maybe, maybe not. You know, so uh, to me, I think it's. I think there's a fine line with you know what you can and can't do, and definitely in today's world, some people are very leery about being connected to somebody that might be a lightning rod. But at the same time, like I feel like you want to go to work every day and feel like you can be yourself, and you don't have to like pump fake your way through the day or when you're in client meetings. So I say, you know, be yourself and um, let the chips fall where they may. So what I got out of that was there's a difference between authentic and unfiltered. Yeah. Like he's saying, yeah. I don't I don't have That's to good. I am filter I filter things out, but I am always authentic. Right. 
Yeah. And I think that's a really important distinction. Once in a while. (laughs) My first interview out of school was, in hindsight, a chop shop, right? They handed you a telephone book and basically it was like, call everyone, right? And then they had these kind of checklist of things. And one of them was, go spend $5,000 on suits, right? It was listed there, suit and tie, everything, pinstripe, whatever. They had like actual kind of color combinations and everything. I didn't know shit. I was coming out of school. Yeah. I'm like, what? do I need to do this? Like, right, right. You know? And then you call and then you meet them. And it didn't matter. Like, the office we were in was uh, like a supply closet, basically, mm-hmm. right? But when you left that office, meet them, suit and tie. And that kind of scarred me for life. Like, not on the suit and tie front, I mean, sort sure. of. Sure. But, but just this persona that Wall Street put out there that in order to manage money, to be an expert, you have to look a certain part, right? <laughs> Um, I, and sometimes we may take that to the other extreme, like doing a podcast in a row right. and you know stuff like that. Um, <laughs> but uh, but you know that that's it always comes up in conversations, and and, and that's interesting. And I, I think it's good for for a conference like this to kind of you know to see where that distinction lies, right? Right. Well, I mean, you know, it's like if you're having if you're having a bad day, maybe that's not the best day to be like out there in the social media atmosphere, like letting the world know your thoughts about what's going on. You know, I mean. It's like you said, I think you nailed it. You know, it's, there's a difference between being like, you know, inauthentic and like just being a little bit filtered. Yeah. Well, you know? what about your personal life? That comes up a lot, right? We all, yeah. to a certain extent, share things about our personal life. And there's some people that right. don't, right? And so where, where does that, that line? I'm a Gary yeah. Vee fan. I mean, like a lot of things right. that coming up in marketing, I modeled after him. Okay. And, and he's one of those people that never shared his personal life. For as much content as he puts out, it's never, you know, a, a thing. Um, and you know, I cleared it with my wife and all because there's kids and stuff sure. like that. Like, where, where do you, where does that intersect with, with you guys? Do you want to take that first? Or? Yeah, I mean, for for me, I'm I'm probably similar in Gary's respect. Like, I don't share a lot. Yeah. I'm very limited about what I share. I only share things that I believe supplement my professional shares. So, all my social media, like, I don't have so a personal it's, Instagram. So it's thought out. Yeah. Like, if you post something Absolutely. about your personal, it's a thought it's out. It's always process. thought out. Okay. So I don't share. I don't have my own personal Instagram, my own personal Facebook. I only have Twitter and LinkedIn. Oh, wow. And what I share on Twitter are things about my personal life that I actually say in my bio that I share, which is like dad tweets mm-hmm. and home improvement projects. Yeah. Because that's stuff that I, I really, you know, I, being a dad is really important yeah, to yeah. me. And the stuff I do, that's my that's my big hobby. Like, yeah, and we noticed I, I that. Right? Yeah, we've noticed so that's what I share. But you won't see me share other things because okay. I, I, part of it's for me, it's uh, psychological. It's, it's safety because when I'm at work, and I leave, I don't feel any pressure, no pressure, to be any way, to act any way, to share anything. I go totally off, and now it's family and fun and personal things, and occasionally I share highlights. Okay. And that's how I compartmentalize things to keep my life balanced. Yeah, that's interesting. So all four of my kids have their own Instagram page. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That my wife has. And when she did it at first, I'm like, this is ridiculous. Right. right? But now I can go back, and she's been religious about posting every day. So I can go back and see a post from every day of their lives. Oh wow! On Instagram now, you know maybe you don't need Instagram to do that. Or you can just take a picture, right? Um, but we've kind of taken that stance that look, it, it's 2022. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, just share whatever you want to share. You know, to, I mean, there's probably a line you draw somewhere. Right? Sure. Um, but where where do you do you have a line that you draw? I mean, so for for me, I'm I'm probably more skewed to where Robert does the way Robert does than than you. I mean. Um, my wife um, likes to keep you know our lives like our lives and not just completely out there and open for the world and I mean and I went through I went through some internal like battles with myself like do I really want like my kids names and faces and stuff being out there for the whole world and and I kind of came down in the middle like you know the truth is is like I, I am a dad and and I love being a dad and so um, there will be moments that that we'll share like with me and the kids but I'm not in that boat where you're going to get a, a daily family something from me. You know, my, most of my social media is more towards like, you know, me, my firm, financial planning, branding, networking, that type of stuff. And there'll be some, there'll be some family stuff in there because part of who I am. But, you know, I, I try to keep a lot of that for us. And, and most of that's just because, you know, I mean, I just am still a little bit protective, I guess you could say, yeah, yeah. Uh, of the because my kids are little, you know, yeah. you know, when they become a little bit older and they they can decide of how much they want to be out there. Yeah, whatever, I own those kids. 
that. <laughs> so, no, I, I, yeah, yeah, I, I just think there's no do separation. This. That's a great yeah. opinion yeah. about parenting, too. Yeah, yeah. I know. And par- yeah, I, I struggle with parents who aren't good parents. Yeah. Um, I'm, a bad, I'm a bad person <laughs> if I take my kid out of pajamas now. Yeah. I learned that from you. I'm, 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 or, now I'm afraid leash, to do it because I don't want to be so judged. Yeah. Yeah. You know, earlier. Oh um, no, I, I just I don't think – for me, there's no separation of business and life to right. a lot of extent. Uh, you know, it, it's it's all there. Mm-hmm. Everything that I've achieved in my personal life is because of business, right? right. And I, I just there's no separation there. And and once again, I think it's because the fact that it's a small business. Yeah. There's no outside investors, you know, and and so I can kind of do what I want. And that, that, that affects it, right? Because you don't have to, if yeah. there's an outside investor peeking over your shoulder telling you to stop doing stuff, then you have to probably. Listen I think to too, and what I would what I would also say is, like for for me. One of the things that, that I have had to really work on is unplugging. And so, like, because, you know, when you're, when you're an advisor and, or a business, a better analogy would be a business owner. And if you have never been a business owner, it's sometimes it's hard to explain. But when, your brain is always working. And you have to, like, find times to unplug yourself and, like, decompress. Because, like, if I'm not working, you know, if I'm not thinking about a specific client case, or some specific thing that we're trying to do with the business, or some type of marketing thing, or what's my next content gonna be about, anything else, like I have to shut that down. And so one of the ways that I am able to shut that down is spending time with my family. So if I'm in, in spending time with my family, now I'm creating like social media content with my family, I'm not really unplugging. And so that's one of the things that I, I really try to do is like when I'm with my kids. How's it going? I'm with my kids. Pretty good. I, I, yeah, you know? I, can't, I don't. Yeah, I, that's, I don't that's just me. I can't unplug. I don't yeah. unplug. If Christopher sends, he's on the West Coast, sends me a message, <laughs> I, I'm not that person. It's, yeah. oh, well, it's Saturday. I'll respond to him. On the, my wife, my wife it. helps me with that too. I mean, because that's, that's a, been a big thing for her. She, she's like, look, you need to like, you know, you need to be present for the family too. And so that's one of the things. It's it's hard. I'm not gonna well, lie. Well, that's a good. Hard. So that's, but that's, a, that's a good piece of it. You oh, totally. Yeah. See, this is about what you enjoy too. Yeah. Like I love my work, but I love so many other things that I don't want my work to overflow into those other things. I don't want to be tweeting or engaging on any work topics when I'm painting or gardening yeah, yeah, or building yeah. or yeah. or kicking a ball in the yard with my son. So for me, it's just I don't love social media that much. I love engaging with my colleagues. Mm-hmm. Well, no, 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 forget about social media. I'm just like talking that's about it, yeah. d- unplugging from your business in general. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I I have a clock, man. And you're like, done, you're I, done. I start every day at the same time, and I end every day at the same time, and when I close the door to my office, I don't go in that room that's until I'm ready to start. Yeah. I need to learn. I have a clock, but it's 24 hours <laughs> long. That's the only downside. All right, so here's the thing. I One thing I always like ending uh, these conversations with is, you know, we always talk about the, the, the stuff we love and the stuff we're yeah. good at. But I like pushing buttons. Like in your business, you know, I'm a huge fan of self awareness. You know, like because we all can come out here and yeah. say we're good at this and we're good at that. But the truth is that there's things that we know inside that we have to get better at. So when it comes to marketing and your practice, yeah. what are the things that just smack you in the face every day that you you admit that you suck at, but you're trying to get better? Or you want to get better at from your perspective and from both of your perspectives in terms of your business. Well, I already confessed our videos. Video. Sorry, so. All right, no, you can't use that answer. <laughs> Try another one. Rob, what do um, you got? Any one of you? Oh, man, you know, I mean, I would say, like, I am in the, at the beginning stages of being, like, a content creator. Like, I I mentally, like, where I'm at is I'm throwing it out there, and I'm not even really interested in a whole lot of feedback because I don't want to take feedback to heart. Like, I just want to create, and I know that like I'm going to be good at it, but it's going to be through doing the reps. I don't think I have like any specific talent or I'm, I'm great at any one thing. I'm just, through my athletic career, I was like, I will work harder than most people, for longer than most people. And so that's just the approach that I'm taking. But for me, like just honestly, just being like a business owner, because you know, our, we have a smaller shop and I think we do a lot of great things, but it is really hard to unzip yourself when you are a client facing advisor and then go be a, a great business owner too. Payroll, HR, it, all that it's, shit. A, it's yeah. a lot, it's a lot. And so um, I would love to be able to, you know I mean? Cause as we continue to grow, we're gonna have things to, to deal with <clears throat> that we've never dealt with before. And so like that's that's the biggest thing for me is just being, being a better business owner in general um, because I think that will spill over to everything else. Cause just like you, Busting my chops at lunch about like, well, why do you why do you not delegating this one thing? 
And I'm like, well, it's because I'm still like this. Like I'm still holding on tight to it because I trust me. And once I get to a comfort level, I've got to be able to learn to trust somebody else. And then that's part of growing a business is being able to bring on team members. Well, listen, that I got I got to interrupt you because yeah. the reason I bust your ass because I got a DM that morning from someone yeah. who said. Yeah. I have someone who's looking for a role in marketing. Do you know anyone to refer him to? And my question back to him was, what the f- is marketing? Yeah. Like people, especially yeah. advisors, they sure. think marketing is one thing. Right. And it's not one thing. A, a successful marketing department, a small firm, needs at least three to five different roles that are full time. Mm-hmm. But we've conditioned ourselves to think marketing is this little tiny piece of the budget. Yeah. One person may be doing it. And and that's why I'm sorry. I just it, it, no, it's it, true. It, it, I just got fired up because I'm like, dude, why, why, why? Final Cut Pro? Like, do you really want to put that on your resume? Like, <laughs> no. Hey, Mr. Klein, I'm no. your Money. And by the way, I put that wedding video <laughs> up will, for you. I will. I will make your your daughter a sweet engagement video. <laughs> yeah, <that's it>. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? What do you suck at? Oh, man. That's the question. You know, I have a hard time balancing when to direct and when to let people go. Um, Because I'm a creative person and I'm a marketer and I have been for 20 years, but I'm the CEO of a company with 120 employees and I can't do justice to the business if I immerse myself in creative projects. So I have to be very, very careful to, first of all, I have to hire people who are specialists. So like you said, Mark, you said, what is marketing? It's a great point because you you need, if you're going to really have a well-rounded strategy, you need people who are good at demand gen and people, there's different styles of copywriting. And there's different types of, you know, how, how different, multiple different types of software that you use. And then there's also design ability that comes into some of that. And so you need designers and writers and copy editors and, and video editors. And it's not the same person. No, it's, it's, yeah, there's it's like getting a marketing that, yeah. person, but you, you're guaranteeing yourself everything to be mediocre. Yeah, yeah. So I have to get the right specialists. I have to trust them and empower them. And I have to give enough high level direction to get what I do, need done, done and ship it without being a perfectionist. Yeah. And that's very hard. So I can stay a CEO because my primary responsibility, and I would say this relates to advisors or anybody who's at the head of of an organization, is to drive enterprise value. And you do not drive enterprise value by being a creative force in your company. You drive enterprise value by hiring creative forces in your company and all the other roles, because that's just another role, and letting them do what they do better than you. And that's always tough, because finding the right talent, keeping the right talent, and setting them in the right direction is just a, it's a constant juggling act for me. Yeah, I have this, my problem is the same. As an entrepreneur, listen, truth is, I personally feel inside that I can do everything better than everyone. Listen, I admit that. Right. So when, when projects go, I'm always like, no, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> so you put the leadership team in yeah. place, and it's and I'll have calls with my entire leadership team, and they ask me a question, and my first answer is like, do I really, do you really want me to answer this? Mm-hmm. You know, and it's a good question. Right? Do you, yeah, because yeah. do you really want me to answer it? Because if you do, I will, but I don't really want to. And then it's like, uh, okay, fine. You know, just. Unless it blows up and you really need me, there's probably not a point in having this conversation. And that's the thing that I've learned the most. And I think personally, that's what helped our growth because I was involved in everything when sure. we were four or five employees. But 120, I mean, that, there's no way it's you can possible. do that. Yeah. You know. So, all right. Well, cool. Listen, let's wrap this up. Thank you for your time. Yeah. I appreciate it. Was it was fun. Thank yep. you. It was good. We're good.